So many students get tripped up when parentheses are combined with exponents, especially when we're talking about negative exponents. Let's go over how it's supposed to be done. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tammy and I do math for coffee. In the first example, the negative two exponent is only on the x and not on the 12. So that equals 12 times x to the negative two. And to multiply that, we're going to put 12 over one. And then the negative two exponent changes to one over x squared. Now, if you don't understand how that works, I put a link up above to an explanation as to why negative exponents flip around. And multiplying straight across, we get 12 equals x squared. Uh -oh. Now moving over to the next one, I have put the whole 12x in parentheses. That means the negative 2 exponent applies to everything that's in the parentheses, including the negative 2. Rewriting that negative exponent the way it is defined to be, you end up with 1 over 12 squared times 1 over x squared. And when you multiply straight across, 1 times 1 is 1. 12 squared is 144. So the answer is 1 over 144 x squared. Let's compare and see what happens when you add parentheses to a negative exponent and a fraction. In the first one, the negative 2 is the exponent on the 3, just the numerator, not the denominator. So we end up with 1 over 3 squared divided by 5. Simplify that we get 1 ninth times 1 fifth because when you divide fractions you have to multiply times a reciprocal multiplying straight across we get 1 over 45. If you need a quick review for fractions that's made just for people who are in upper level math courses there is a link in the description. Now what happens when we take the entire fraction 3 fifths put parentheses around it and raise that to the negative 2 power? Well in that case the exponent is going to apply to the numerator and the denominator. So rewrite this as 3 to the negative 2 over 5 to the negative 2. Simplifying, or in this case making it a little more complicated, you end up with 1 over 3 squared divided by 1 over 5 squared. That's 1 ninth divided by 1 25th. When you divide fractions, you skip, flip, multiply on the second one. So it becomes 1 ninth. That stays the same. And we go from division to multiplication, and it turns into 25 over 1. Multiplying straight across, we get 25 over 9. That is in lowest terms. I understand that some of you are going to look at that and go, but they're both perfect squares. Yeah, they are, but we're not doing square roots right now. So unless you're asked to do a square root of that, that's done. You know, there's nothing that divides into 25 and 9. For the big finale, we're going to take a problem and we're going to change it up a little bit so you have three different variations of it depending on where you put those parentheses. In the first one, we have no parentheses. So the exponent of negative 3 is only on the x in the numerator. That turns into 2 times 1 over x cubed, and all of that is being divided by 7x. Rewriting 7x over 1 is going to help us with some simplification here. When you multiply the 2 times 1 over x cubed, you get 2 over x cubed. We're still being divided by 7x over 1. Changing that division problem into a multiplication problem, we get 2 over x cubed multiplied times 1 over 7x, multiplying straight across. That's 2 over 7 to the x to the fourth power. In the second case, the entire numerator is being raised to the negative third power, which means that includes the 2 now. So it's 2 to the negative third times x to the negative third down below the denominator of 7x is totally left alone. We end up with 1 over 2 cubed times 1 over x cubed divided by 7x. Simplifying all of this, we end up with 1 over 2 cubed times 1 over x cubed, which is just the numerator recopied. But now instead of dividing by 7x, we're going to multiply by 1 over 7x, which is the same thing as dividing, but it makes it easier to do. Multiply all the numerators straight across, you get 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. Down below, 2 cubed is 8, x cubed times 7x, and our final answer is 1 over 56, x to the fourth power. And in the last one, what if you take this entire algebraic fraction and raise it to the negative third power by popping it into a set of parentheses? Believe it or not, this is actually the easiest way to do it because when you have that expression in the parentheses, you can simplify that expression all on its own before you do anything with the exponent. The x's on the top and the bottom will cancel each other out. We end up with just two sevenths raised to the negative third power. How sweet is that? Yay! Two is raised to the negative third and seven is raised to the negative third. So we have one over two cubed divided by one over seven cubed. 
and that's going to simplify to 1 over 2 cubed times 7 cubed over 1. Multiplying straight across, we get 7 cubed over 2 cubed. If you need more work with exponents, go ahead and check out this playlist. However, if you also want to check out that fraction review for students who are in upper level math courses, this one is right here for you to go ahead and click on it.